Hi, my name is Katie Copens, and I'm a teacher and a children's book author. Uh, one of my most recent books out is called Geometry is as Easy as Pie, and this teaches geometrical concepts by comparing them to pie and pie recipes. So we're going to make one of the recipes from the book today, which is called Parallel and Perpendicular Lattice Apple Pie. So I'm going to walk you through the steps of this, and at the end I'll show you a zoom in of the recipe that you can use to try to do this at home. Before we begin, I want to show you the ingredients that you're going to need. We have flour, sugar, cooking spray, milk, two pie crusts that are not cooked, butter, apples, lemon juice, cornstarch, and cinnamon. Now I'll show you the cooking tools that you'll need, a cutting board and a knife, two bowls, either aluminum foil or a pie guard, a pie pan, a peeler, a half a cup, and a half a teaspoon and a half a tablespoon measuring tools. All right, now we're gonna start cooking. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that your hands are clean. So you wash them with soap. The first step is to actually preheat the oven. So we're gonna preheat it to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And now we're gonna mix our dry ingredients. So you've got two bowls. I'm gonna put this in the bigger of the two bowls. So we're gonna start with a half a cup of flour. So this is actually our first geometrical concept. So this is measuring in terms of volume how much space the flour is taking up. So a half a cup in the bowl. And then I don't wanna dip this into the sugar because it's got flour on it. Just so we can get a little bit more math with some fractions. So I've got this other one that's clean. So this is a quarter cup. So if I do a quarter cup and a quarter cup, that is gonna add up to a half a cup. So I'm gonna add that. And the next dry ingredient is the cinnamon. So. I like a lot of cinnamon in my apple pie, so I always do this over the bowl just in case there's a little bit of extra that spills. So this is a half a teaspoon, but I'm gonna do a whole teaspoon. So I'm gonna do two on here. You could dip it in, but I always, I prefer not to if I don't have to, just for cleanliness. So there's one half. Okay, and there's another half. I'll just take a spoon. I'm gonna mix this all up. Okay, and these are just our dry ingredients. I'm gonna set that aside. And then the next step are going to be the apples. So the recipe calls for five large apples. I only have these smaller Macintosh, so I'm actually gonna use six of them. So we're gonna start by just talking about what the apple represents. So obviously this is pretty close to a sphere in terms of its shape, but it also we're going to peel off the skin. So the skin represents the surface area on this apple. So what I'm gonna do is peel all of these and then I'm gonna cut them up. All right, so here's one apple peel. So you can see the peel in here. So this was really taking the surface area, representing that. And now I'm just gonna show you how to cut them. So I always put some lemon juice in the bowl. Just a bit, you don't have to be perfect here, just about a couple squirts. And then when I cut them, I like to do them one at a time because otherwise the apple's gonna start to turn brown. So when you cut them, you're just doing them, I always do the sides first. Try to get as much of that apple off as you can. They don't have to be perfect by any means. It's a homemade apple pie, so embrace that and the fun of it. Okay. So here's those little bits. And the reason why I get it in that lemon juice is I don't want it to turn brown. So then I'm gonna cut these. You can do them as big pieces like this, or you can cut them into smaller. I like them pretty big, because I like the apple pie to still have a little bit of crispness to it. So I'm gonna do this for all of my apples, and then I'll show you the next step. From there. Just one safety thing when you're cutting. Uh, you don't want to hurt your fingers. So a good thing is when you cut to have the your fingernails kind of pointed down. When you cut, it keeps your fingers safe as you go. Okay. So I'm gonna do this for all the apples and I'll show you the next step. Alright, so I have all of my apples peeled and cut. I'm gonna add a little bit more lemon juice on top. And then I'm gonna mix that all in. And again, this is to help. Slow down that process of the apples browning. So at this point, I'm gonna add all my ingredients together and then add a bit of cornstarch. So I'm gonna mix the apple mixture into the dry. Okay. So I'm gonna get a half a tablespoon of cornstarch and this helps thicken it. Move a little bit much, there we go. And there we go. All right, and then we'll stir this all up. And this is gonna be our filling. And you can adjust this if you like nutmeg, if you like more cinnamon, um, you can add more ingredients to it. It's 
So we're just gonna try to get as evenly coated as we can for those apples. So for this, I have my, set this aside. As I go, I like to, when I'm done with the ingredients, just set them aside so I have an easier working space. So I'm done with the lemon juice. I'm done with the cinnamon. I'm done with the sugar. I'm not done with the flour. Keep that in front of me. Okay. So, in the book has you getting prepared pie doughs. You can always make your own. There is a recipe in the book that's that's pretty easy to follow. Um, but when you're learning something new, if you haven't made pies before, I like the process of taking one of the big steps out, and that is the dough in this. So I have prepared pie dough that I'm going to use for this recipe. So you want to have two. So the first thing we're going to do is lay this down. So this is why you have cooking spray. And this just helps so it doesn't stick. So if we look at this geometrically, so this represents, um, it's crimped, but it represents a circle. So when we put it in, try to start in the center. And then you're gonna see filling in the bowl. So at this point, I already got that in there. You want to add your filling. This is when we hope we uh, estimated our amount of apples correctly. If you didn't, you can always dump it back in the bowl and add more apples. So this ended up being six of those Macintosh. And if I have any of the flour, sugary, cinnamon mix, I'm gonna put that on top so this looks pretty good. More on top. Okay. So, all right. Next thing we're gonna do is add our butter. So for this, I always I had this out softening a little bit as I was doing the rest. It's okay if it's right from the fridge. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit of butter and put that on top before I do my lattice. Putting it throughout the top. All right, and now is where it gets my favorite part, which is the lattice top. So I'm gonna set this aside. You can still see it as we build up on it. So we wanna put a little bit of flour down. So I'm gonna get a clean spoon. Okay. And put flour on where I'm gonna put this out. And that's just so it doesn't stick to the counter. Put down your other pie dough. And this is why it's called parallel and perpendicular lines. You'll see as we do the cutting and the placement. Okay, so I've got that down. I'm gonna need to have a knife. So what we're gonna do, and in the book I show using a ruler. You're welcome to do that if you have a clean ruler. Um, that makes the lines nice and crisp. You can also use a pie cutter to do the same thing. Um, but it's okay, again, I, I don't need it to be perfect. I think that's part of what makes this so fun. So I'm gonna do some natural lines of where it was folded. Set this aside so you can see. But what I am gonna try to do is have them be about the same width for these lines. Okay. So we cut, cut, cut. I'm gonna pause and I'll show you after it's all cut. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to do the lattice top. So you wanna start with parallel lines of our pie crust that's been cut. So I like to start going across the diameter of the pie. So it's right in the middle. Okay. And I'm just gonna let these hang over. And then I go little by little. And you can decide how big you want the gaps to be in between the pieces, it's up to you. You can have them tight like this, or a little bit farther. I like to see the pie in between the lattice. 
going to take one from the edge here. Okay. So we're trying to get them as evenly spaced as we can. And you can go for it to be symmetrical or not. It's up to you. Okay, so now we've got it going all the way across. All of these lines are parallel. And now this is how we make the lattice, by going perpendicular. So in this time, I start on one of the sides. So this is much like weaving, where you're going over, under, over, under. So I'm gonna start over, and then I'm gonna lift every other one back. And that is just, I found, makes it a lot easier to do it. So I'm going to put these back. Okay. And then it's the same method, but the opposite. So now for this one, I'm going to go from the other way. I'm going to go under. And try to keep them pretty evenly spread out. Okay, I'm going to go under. I'm gonna go under. I'm gonna go over. Okay, I'm gonna put this one back down. So you can see what we're doing, little by little, building. So just make sure they're straight as you go. You can always fix it when it's uncooked. Once it's cooked, you can't fix it. Okay, so we're gonna keep our pattern going. So you can see these lines are also parallel, but they're perpendicular to each other. So if you look at, we've got 90 degree angles. So our next one, now for this one, we're going over. Oops. Okay, and under. Try and space that out evenly. And I've made them before where I've had um, different thicknesses of, and it looks pretty neat doing that too. Okay, next one. Okay, so I went over on this, so now I need to go under. I'm gonna lift these. Okay, put that right across. Oops. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, and now this was under, so now it's gonna go over, which means this one is gonna be our under. And then I kind of have this little piece at the end, but I am going to put one there just because I think it's a little bit big. You can always shift and slide and adjust as well. Okay, so this was over, so now I'm going to go under. This one might be the bigger one. And I have plenty of dough because the, the gap was so big. If it was tighter, I'd have less dough left over. Okay, so now... take this and then this is when I get back to using my knife and I like to have it go over just a little bit so I'm going to cut that excess off so what I'm really doing right now is I'm going around the circumference so I'm going right around the outside of this circle I'm cutting off the excess And then, okay, almost done. Okay, and then we're gonna do something called crimping. So we're gonna crimp it together. So we did this. Kind of crimping as we go. Oh, almost got one. Okay, crimping as we go. as we go. 
Here we go. And that crimping gives it like a nice thick crust on the outside. Okay, so, and this is the time to fix anything on the lattice. If you need to straighten anything to try to get it as perpendicular as you can. Okay, so at this point, you could call it done, or if we're trying to get a whole lot of geometrical concepts into this pie, why don't we do something with all of this extra dough? So I'm actually gonna pause and go get some cookie cutters and show you a way that we can build in some symmetry into this pie. So we're gonna stop and I'll be right back and show you the next step. All right, so we've got our beautiful lattice top on the apple pie. Now I had all this extra dough. So I still have some flour down. So I'm just gonna make that into a sphere, put that down. And then if you have a rolling pin, I'm gonna roll it out. Try to get it as close as you can to the thickness that the dough was when you took it out of the package. And let's see if we can do a symmetrical top. So, all right, that looks good. So I've got my cookie cutter. So I'm gonna do four of these. One, two, I'm going to show you me placing these on top and how we're going to do some symmetry. I'll do one more just in case one of them gets squished. All right, so let me show you how to make a symmetrical top with some of the extra dough. All right, we've got our cutouts. I'm going to find the center point of the pie. We can get some symmetry. Get these. Just adds a little detail to it. And now why you had the milk is we are gonna do a milk um, coating on top and this makes your pie nice and shiny. If you have a tool that's like a little cooking brush, you can use that, You can, or you could use your finger and just dip it right in. I'm gonna use this. You can see it kind of beads up. You can also do this um, with an egg. And if you used an egg, what you would do is just with a fork, uh, break the egg, kind of mix it up together the white and the yolk, and you could do the same thing. Right on these. And before it goes in the oven, that's when you wanna look at it and think any last touches, any last changes. I have plenty more dough. You could always do some around the circumference of doing a pattern of, um, with the cookie cutters, which could look really nice. So I'm just gonna make sure my crimping is all good. A little bit more milk. And then you can put it in the oven just like this or kind of a baking tip so the outside doesn't cook faster. This is a tool that I have that goes on top or you could put aluminum foil right around the circumference all the way around the circle and use that as well. So what I'm gonna do now is put this in the oven for 30 minutes and then we'll look at it and we'll talk a bit more about what's going on. And then we're gonna do a little added bonus of making some whipped cream. All right, so in the oven for 30 minutes. All right, while it's in the oven, we're gonna do a little bonus and make some whipped cream on top. So to make your own whipped cream, I have heavy whipping cream. So I'm gonna add all of this. And this is a great example of increasing volume. So you can see, so this amount, we've got a pint here gonna end up making a whole lot more than a pint. So now I'm gonna add a little splash of flavoring to it. And this is optional if you'd like to do it or not. So I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla to it. So just a splash of vanilla. Okay. And then if you don't want it sweet, don't add sugar. I do like it sweet. So I'm gonna add about a spoonful of sugar. And you can always add more can't take it away. So I'm gonna do this on fast forward so you can see it mixing and the volume increasing.
So you can see how much the volume increased, and then this is gonna be the topping for the pie. All right, and now it's time to get our pie out of the oven. Okay, let's see how it looks. All right, there it is. Here is our pie. Let's get the pie guard off and see how it looks. And next step is to cut it and add some of that whipped cream. All right, now it's time to cut into our pie. This is where we get to use angles. So all the way around the pie from that center point is gonna be 360 degrees. So if we cut it into four pieces, then we're gonna have four right angles, which are 90 degrees. 90 times four is 360 degrees. Or we can do some acute pieces, which are the small ones, less than 90 degrees, or obtuse pieces, which are very big, bigger than 90 degrees. So when you cut, think about the amount of angles, the amount of degrees, the type of angles that you're gonna use when you cut these, how many people you're cutting for. If you're gonna do the same sizes, if you're gonna do different sizes. All right, and this is where it's nice that we did that spray on the bottom. This is a big piece. Let's see. All right. And look at that. So that cornstarch is holding all that. Oh, it's steaming. Hold that. Ooh, will I not drop it? Look at that yummy pie. All right, we'll add this to our plate. And then that whipped cream that we make. I like to put the whipped cream right on top. Yum, and there you are. You can enjoy some delicious math. I'm gonna give you a tour of the book. So the first chapter involves symmetry. And the first pie recipe is the super simple symmetrical pumpkin pie. Next up is polygons with the crustless quiche. We've got measurements of a shape. With the no-bake chocolate mousse pie, this is my favorite pie in the book. Parallel and perpendicular lines with the lattice apple pie that we just made. Angles. With the 360 degree mini berry pies with homemade crust. And then it all comes together in one pie. There's some math problems involving pie and those answers are on the website for Tumble Home Books. And then just desserts are some pie inspiration and it ends with a glossary of terms from the book.